It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 345. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe, trying to get my timer to work. <laughs> I'm hitting the button, it's not working. Not oh. off to a good start. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, indeed. <laughs> indeed. So, uh, I guess uh, we should start with a, our book club announcement. Now, I know we talk about the book club a lot, because we're hoping you'll you'll join us but uh we have a really big announcement about the book club yeah for this week i am so incredibly excited so the next book that we are reading is turning inward by ross rayburn the big news is that ross rayburn will be joining us on february 13th on zoom at 7 p.m central 8 p.m eastern I am so freaking excited. <laughs> He's just like the nicest person. He is super nice. Yeah. So if uh, if you would like to partake, go on over to patreon.com slash the clip out. Uh, you have to be a Patreon member, but it's but you can do it at the free level. You don't have to give us money, although we'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're and not proud. <laughs> um, but uh, but you can you can do this for free. But um, but it, it, all the information will get pushed out. The links and all that will get pushed out through Patreon. And we're asking that you RSVP for this one. If you have a question, you can submit it. And, um, and not just RSVP, register. Register. So sorry. the only place you can register is going to the Patreon page. So it's patreon.com slash the clip out. Click join community. As soon as you see things about the book club, you're in the right place. Ta-da. And then you have to register if you would like to join because we have a very hard stop. Zoom is like a hundred people. So we need to make sure we don't go over that number. Correct. So, um, so anyway, head on over there. Hopefully we will see you on February 13th. Did I get right? <laughs> you did. I did. <laughs> I never know the date until I get home from work and Crystal's like, we have the book club tonight. Yeah, that is like, true. Oh, what was it about? <laughs> it's like, That's- is that today? <laughs> was another one of those star-crossed lover things <laughs> so uh anyway very that'll that'll be fun and uh hopefully you'll be able to join us we should also before the show gets away from us let's do our first bingo call out okay uh so let me i have to go out of the full screen to see my other screen because all i can see is yours right now tom and that just will not do all right so for our first call out this week, it is Cody Rigsby. So if you take a class with Cody this week, just mark it on your little bingo squares. And I think uh, for a lot of people, that's like a free square. I mean, there are a lot of people that take classes <laughs> with Cody. There's also people that never take classes sure. with Cody. I yeah. mean, all these instructors are that way because yeah. there's just so darn many of them. There are. We're very fortunate. So anyway, there you go. And we will have a second one later in the episode. And hopefully Tom didn't record or didn't delete my little note I of didn't. where we're supposed to put it. It's on the list, so Whew. you hush it. <laughs> That's enough out of you. So, uh, uh, and who was our guest this week? Our guest is Andrew Sellers. Uh, a few months ago, we had him on to talk about VO2 Master and uh, how things were going with my running. And this time, we have Andrew Sellers back, and he goes through my numbers. And uh, this is this actually was recorded in October. I know it's been a while. Um, well, now I feel better about not remembering you it. You weren't even there. Well, I feel even better <laughs> about not remembering it. Well, this will be a real treat for the listeners. <laughs> like, oh, hey. Hey, Tom's not there. <laughs> this might be our most downloaded episode ever. But it, I, I feel like people will find it interesting for a few reasons. One, we get super into the data and we look at how my numbers have been coming out. But also we start talking about Stride and the um, program that I'm using through Stride. Um, and then uh, I have an update, but we'll we'll listen to his his uh, 
interview first. It's not really an interview. It's more of a discussion. But after that discussion, I'll give you an update on how things are going as well. Okay. Well, we'll do that in the back end. Okay. So, um, and other than that, what pray tell do you have in store for people this week? Well, we have big news on the Tread Plus. Um, we also have some updates. You know, the earnings call is coming up. So we have some discussion about that. Uh, we also have a discussion about lots of things that Peloton has been up to this week, not to mention the instructors being in the news. We also have a visit from Dr. Jen. And this week we talk about uh, when grief is impacting your motivation. Uh, We have an artist series update, past guest update, and uh, a bunch of content stuff as well. Okay. Well, before we get to all that shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts iHeart, tune in youtube wherever you find a podcast you can find us while you're there be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode maybe leave us a review it is super helpful and we do very much appreciate it you can also find us on facebook at facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there like the page join the group it's a great way to stay up to date on things throughout the week so you don't just have to wait for the weekly episodes and uh if you would like to support the show we would love to have you uh you can do that over at patreon.com slash the clip out uh it's only five dollars a month and you get tons of stuff along with it it's not just a donation we actually give you things in return <laughs> uh you get ad free episodes you get uh if we get the episodes early you get them early if we get them late you'll get them a little bit earlier than everyone else who's getting them late (laughs) but we've been pretty good lately (laughs) we just had some hiccups at the top of the year yeah but uh we've been back on a roll so but anyway if we get them early you get them early and uh of course you get bonus episodes and it's a just extra stuff that we didn't have time to fit in the episode because we're trying to keep these tighter. So it's another. This is, a, this is a busy week for that. It is. So <laughs> there's another 20, 30 minutes of content uh, over there. So if that's your jam, we would love to have you. And also, uh, don't forget, you can watch all of these episodes over at YouTube, youtube.com slash the clip out. And finally, uh, you can get all the links and whatnot sent to you if you sign up for our newsletter at the clip So there's all of that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? We shall. Peloton in the news. We finally have some insight as t- to when the Tread Plus will begin shipping. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody who listens has been, you know, checking out the OPP. But let me tell you, there have been pretty much every five minutes <laughs> since January 2nd. Does anyone know when the Tread Plus is going to start shipping? And today we got an answer. So I will say this. That is irritating if you're on the OPP. But so is being on the OPP at this point. Like, you know what you're in for. I don't yeah. feel bad for you. But, Agreed. Um, uh, but I will also say that's maybe a good sign that that many people have bought one and are like, TikTok, where is it at? That is true. That is true. I mean, they needed that to happen because don't forget they had 10,000 of them sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Right. But uh, we got an answer today. The email started going out. Tread Plus will start shipping in two weeks. So that is definitely early 2024. They are saying that all of the pre orders that are in right now will be delivered by the end of April. Okay. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people that are upset about how long this is taking, but I just want to remind everyone that when Tread Plus first came out, mm. um, <laughs> I had to wait an entire year after I pre-ordered. Yeah. So y'all just settle down. They were like, it will be out by the fall. And, and it, it was, was like on December 20th yeah. you got yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was as close to the winter solstice as you can get. Yes. So when Peloton says... It was actually says, delivered by two Wiccans. That's <laughs> how close to the summer solstice it was. Winter, winter sol- solstice. It was. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny, though. I mean, I get I get people want their machine, and I, and I know they're excited, and yeah. I totally understand that. But it is, it is kind of just like, okay, y'all, just chill. Yes. Um, but I, I guess, on the other hand, I can kind of understand, like... Um, You guys had them sitting in the warehouse. What is the problem? So my theory is that they are trying to coordinate the rear guards being installed with the existing ones and any, let's say, feature changes that could be dropping, happening kind of all at the same time. Gotcha. Okay. Well, there you go. If you ordered one, you've been waiting. Your wait is almost over. 
Congrats. Also, there is some lane break Tread Plus news. Yeah. So this is speculation. Right. Let me be very clear. But about a week ago, there was a video that popped up on Peloton Studios Instagram. And it was Matt Wilpers. And he was talking about all the technology that was dropping across Peloton in the month of January. And um, that video was taken down approximately 30 minutes after it was released. (laughs) But before it got taken down, I saw that they said that lane break for Tread Plus was everywhere. And it's not, right? Which is why the video got taken down, I'm sure. But back to my point about the Tread Plus getting ready to ship, I think it's pretty safe to say we are real close, real close. By the end of January, I suspect we are all going to have lean break for Tread Plus, And I'm very excited about that. So let me ask you this and play devil's advocate. Sure. What if it got pulled because it's not going to be ready in time for January and it's going to be like mid-February? I mean, hey, anything is possible. Right. Uh, and that could go along with the Tread. The Tread Plus is starting to ship within two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but... If they already created the content, my guess is that somebody put it up on the wrong day. Like gotcha. they had it scheduled. Like it was supposed to go out like the, you know how you can the schedule fourth things. Wednesday and they hit the third Wednesday <laughs> right. in their little calendar view. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's super easy Not to do. Not that I've ever done that. So any, yeah, we all have. <laughs> Anybody who does anything with a calendar has put it on the wrong day. And so... Listen, I'm not promising anybody anything, but I feel real strongly that it is, I feel like it's going to happen by the end of January. That's why when I'm like, happy anniversary, and you're like, it, it's next Tuesday. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just kidding. That's my, I just couldn't wait because I love you so much. But I love you more. Totally not a thing. So uh, moving right along, uh, Motley Fool had an article this week that I think was on Yahoo. Finance it was as well. everywhere. It was everywhere. Yeah. Just talking about uh, it's acting. It's funny. It's acting like this is like groundbreaking. But I guess for a lot of people it is. But they're like how Peloton really makes its money. It's not from the equipment. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not from the thing that they sell you once and then you never buy buy from them again yeah interesting i will say this if you look at the financials over the last several years obviously that has shifted right like it used to be you know that the the equipment side of things was a lot bigger right than everything else but that has shifted for obvious reasons once you have the piece of equipment you don't need the piece of equipment and they were kind of like hitting critical mass and constantly bringing in new people to buy equipment and so what where they're really making their money is off the membership fees right and and barry's been saying that since day one like we need to be in all the places i don't care what machine they do it on i just want them to be on peloton and this is the business model for everyone right it's why like if you buy a toaster they're like like, well, would you like to pay for the monthly set your toast by what it looks like on the app, right? I like, don't know why anybody would do that on a piece of toast. I don't know, but okay. they'll try it. They will. If they think they that they can get you to give them eight ninety five a month for the ability to do it, then they'll do it. I mean, Facts. everything's like that. Everything. I mean, remember, remember when we were kids <laughs> and you could buy buy software and then you would own the software do you remember when you would had you had to install it on your computer yeah and and you had oh that was a whole process like you can't buy software anymore it's funny i was i was perusing like just things and i happened to see that like every posting out there about job stuff these days Mm -hmm. is like service software as a service software as a service software as a service like everything is that these days even movies right like oh yeah like i like i have we have but i'm the one who this is my week these are my leggings is buying movies on (laughs) your leggings and uh (laughs) and uh, we have a shitload of movies on voodoo that we own So many. like i mean like Oh, Stuff you've never heard 12 of. Twelve or thirteen hundred movies on video. But I buy them when they go on sale and they're like five dollars. But um but uh but if you read the terms and conditions, you don't own those movies when you buy them. No. They could theoretically take them away at any time. They now, could. if they did, there would start to be an uproar, and I don't think that that will happen, or I wouldn't be buying so many of them. But, like, you don't even technically own those, right? right. You can't download them in right. most instances. So, um, so anyway, I, uh, I... I think, though, that this is very timely, especially in light of the fact that, again, the earnings call is next week. Right. You know, um, I did... Uh, 
we're, we're going to get into some of the things that I talked about, but let this week I did a little video for the TikTok and um, I put on there like all the things that we expect to hear about in the earnings call and um, talking about the Lululemon partnership, the pop facility, uh, you know, all of those things. Well, they all kind of drive toward this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, This is the revenue side of things, of course. But, you know, if you're going to have like, I don't know, six billion people on the platform, which is what they're trying for. I can't remember the number. Right. It's ginormous. You have to you have to be on the app. You're not going to sell that many pieces of equipment. That's not realistic. Right. So you got to go where the people are. For sure. And I ultimately, I know they make more off the memberships if you have equipment. But like in a lot of ways, they'd probably rather you just get the app because they don't have to worry about the equipment breaking or you you being upset because it got shipped. Le- you know what I mean? It's That's like, true. boom, there's like zero overhead and adding one more. That person to to the app platform that is all profit so that's the goal that is speaking of the pop facility it was sold last week just right after we got done recording you came across this story yeah i mean this is a big deal this this is monumental like there are moments that pass quietly Mm -hmm. and it doesn't affect any of us right like so you don't really think about it right but this is a really big deal um you know peloton bought this piece of equipment When the pandemic boom for Peloton was at its height and they bought it for six point two million dollars because it was just land. Right. So they then started creating the manufacturing facility that summer. So summer of twenty twenty two or I'm sorry, summer of twenty one. And then February of twenty twenty two. John Foley stepped down. The wheels start to come off. Thirty eight hundred people were let go. Everything changed by February that quick. That's how it went. And uh, then they couldn't get rid of this fast enough. Like they said at that time, we're not going to use it. They started putting it up for sale, but it's taken all the way till 2024 to sell this monstrosity. Well, you got to figure it's not like selling a house, you no, know? It, well, I mean, he sold his house in the Hamptons pretty quick. <laughs> but, oh, Tom. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, like there's a limited number of people that or companies that are going to need a facility of this nature so you have a lot fewer opportunities to sell it like any one of us could just buy a house in the Hamptons. of course that's easy peasy but like a whole manufacturing facility why what would i manufacture well it, it ended up selling for 33 million dollars and uh it was sold to first solar which from everything i've read is the largest solar panel manufacturer in the united states it so must be true because it says it in their press release it says it everywhere <laughs> um but uh is it like when you buy a book on kindle and it's like the girl in the cupboard. It the, is the taut the- psychological thriller. <laughs> Anytime a book describes itself in its title, I'm like, this is hot garbage, and, it, and I true. won't buy it. I it's like true. Anytime, like any title of a book that has its own description, like that book is a piece of shit. Do not read it. I see what you're trying to do with your SEO clicks, yeah. and I'm not falling for it. Yes. But anyway, uh, yeah. So first, Solar bought it. It's done. This means, though, just in time for the next earnings call, we should see or at least understand how it's going to. I mean, this will affect the next quarter, right. but we'll get to hear, I would think, some very preliminary idea of how it's going to affect the financials. For so sure. I'm, I'm excited about that. Hopefully, stock market like stock market likes it, too. Yeah. And uh, a little tease about uh, the next book club on patreon will be the girl in the cupboard so <laughs> a taught psychological a taught thriller. psychological thriller <laughs> written by crystal o'keefe so it's got the peloton time <laughs> so if you applied for your world record certificate for the turkey burn uh <laughs> most people disappointed by a ride crashing is that what the yeah. award was for okay no, no it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> most largest number of people on an exercise platform or something like that during the ride and on a Thursday morning and a run. Yeah. It was both. Okay. <laughs> they are shipping out. We have a, a picture here of someone holding this. This is Trish Lalonde. From, oh, okay. Remember we t- we sat with her in London. Yeah, yeah. We've met her. I know the picture. She's tiny. got the thing in front of her face. And I know the she does. Tiny and I'm a hundred years old. Also, I, I didn't kind remember of earlier this. if I had actually recorded an interview with 
you or not. So I, that's true. Yeah. I also use this picture without Trisha's consent. So Uh-oh. here's hoping yes. Trish is okay with that. <laughs> Fingers she, crossed. She posted another group, so I thought it would be all right. Yeah. But uh, yes, they have arrived. The Guinness World Records. So it's a it's a nice little little thing from it is. the picture. It is like, and and she was on both both classes, so she got to get two. I figured because she had two in the picture, but yeah. not everybody knows that. I, I can see the picture. <laughs> and I will also say that um, she, you know, a lot of people when she was posting about this didn't realize that like we had posted the link. You can go order it. The link is on our website, right. so super easy to find if this is something you are interested in. Yeah, it's. It's exciting, you know, to be part of something like that. Peloton's Lululemon Move For You collaboration uh, now has an official event. Yeah, you might remember a few weeks ago we talked about that something might be occurring at the Minneapolis location, Mall of America, on January 28th. Turns out we were right. Oh, look at that. We were right about something. Mm. Uh, (laughs) No comment. Um, (laughs) So much to say. You can listen to that in the bonus episode, too. Um, But on January 28th, the Lululemon instructors, some of the Lululemon instructors will be at the Mall of America Lululemon location. Now, keep in mind, this is the experiential store. Right. So it's the ginormous one. It's the big badass one. And there are going to be classes taking place that are live with these instructors at that store. Can you be part of it? Yeah, you totally missed your chance. Like this went up and it was gone so fast. Um, And the other interesting thing we thought about this, uh, the helper bees and I, uh, we thought we were just a buzz with the information. Yes, that you had to be a Lululemon studio member. To be able to get this. So you oh. had, yeah, you couldn't just be Peloton. No, no. You had to be one of the studio people. Good for them. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that. That's our instructors. Yeah, but like it's at a Lululemon <laughs> store. And if and if if you subscribe, if you paid money to do this mirror thing, which we all know was stupid, like there should be some small upside. So here you go. They pulled you into the to the Peloton Ecoverse and and their their thank you for having a membership to this stupid piece of equipment is you get to meet these instructors. You get first crack at that. Like, I, I feel OK about that. OK, well, yeah. there you go. So um, and I should also say in an interesting turn of events that mm-hmm. was odd, Lululemon instructors taught at the Peloton studios last night. Now, the odd part about that is that it was not <laughs> hyped up. At all. Yeah. When when I say it wasn't hyped up at all, I mean Peloton said nothing about it. There were no posts. The only reason, like, Peloton sent out emails to members. Again, you had to be a Lululemon studio member mm-hmm. to be part of these classes. That was it. This was not posted on Peloton socials. This was posted on Lululemon socials. Interesting. I thought so. So they were teaching like classes for leftover mirror subscribers but doing it from the peloton studios with the peloton instructors but but with with lululemon instructors both they were all there it's like a party that's very odd right that's it's like what does that mean is there more coming yeah i don't know i have no knowledge that there is like i i i don't know but the the last of the mirror live classes were aired this week i do know that um and uh the the instructors that were there was like jaron somebody i'm sorry i don't know their names because i don't yeah. take their classes but i know i know in the lululemon mirror studio world he's a big deal gotcha. like I, he's I, like their guy yeah like he's, he's their guy he's their cody or something yes um and so people were very excited about it and yeah. and the instructors from lululemon they seemed very excited about it too i just thought it was really weird that like Peloton just said nothing yeah. like I was just like what does this say about their partnership when we go to their location it's everywhere right they come to our location it is nowhere crickets. it's like I don't I don't know how to read that yeah I, mean, I know how to read that I just don't know what was intended by that yeah it yeah it is it's there's a lot to unpack I don't right? know what to make of it but yeah it'd be like going to the Peloton studio and getting a Lululemon instructor would be like seeing Van Halen with Gary Sharon 
I don't know who that is. <laughs> He's the third lead singer of Van Halen. Oh, that's why I don't know who he right. is. No the one cares. That's your exactly. point. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you now. <laughs> yes, he was the lead singer of Extreme that they brought in after Sammy Hagar left. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I remember when they played St. Louis, they were Van Halen in St. Louis. They were literally selling lawn tickets for $5. No. Because... They because it was that guy because nobody cared. Wow. Like that's saying a lot. I tell you what, I know people listening don't really get the significance of that in St. Louis, but like Van Halen in St. Louis, I don't know why Van Halen's big everywhere. Of course they are. But in St. Louis, it's like it's it's super big. I I don't understand. To put in perspective, when Sammy Hagar plays in St. Louis, he will sell 20,000 tickets every time. Yeah. Every single time like anywhere else in, in America. He's good for like two to four thousand here. He will sell 20,000 tickets every single time. So anyway, I just yeah, that's a uh, that's very odd. I thought so. Uh, or I think so. Uh, oh, and we should also say one last item about Lululemon and Peloton. There was the Move For You challenge that was occurring. And people who have completed the challenge, Peloton is sending out gifts. I don't know if that's to everybody, but I do know that some people are getting gifts for completing the challenge. It seems unlikely that everyone would get a gift. <laughs> I guess it depends on how many people do it. Uh, Touche. But you would <laughs> no, think a lot of I people I get what you're saying. Yeah. And I, I agree. I do agree with you. Um, you get you a know. leftover turkey burn hat. <laughs> <laughs> you never know you never know <laughs> but i don't want everybody thinking they're getting a gift yes because i don't know <laughs> so i'm thinking you're not yeah. getting a gift i know i'm not because yeah. i didn't do it no i mean i think <laughs> if you did it i would like you that i doubt it's for everybody yeah like, i do that's, too. That seems expensive so. yeah um uh also uh, an interesting thing in the world of precore this week they have introduced the next generation of cardio consoles yeah, so we talked about a couple weeks ago about how there's like all these like treadmills outside of Peloton that are suddenly able to communicate with the Peloton app. Peloton never did communicate anything after yeah. we asked. They were just like, we have no comment on we this We don't know matter. what you're talking about. They didn't say that. Yeah, I know. They <laughs> just they I, came I don't, real close to being like. They just they just said they had nothing to say about it. And they were very polite. Um, no comment. You know, no, no matter how you spin it, it's no comment. Right. But, Regardless, uh, the interesting thing is this new console uh, allows you to use whatever's on your phone. So it doesn't matter if it's Peloton okay, or if it's Mirror or if it's Apple Fight Camp, or, I mean, yeah. whatever. You, yeah. you can mirror whatever's on your phone. Yeah. That's that's the whole point of it. Which makes perfect sense because Precore is primarily going to be in public facing areas hotel gyms public gyms ymcas so like they need to be able to do whatever you got on your phone instead of trying to force you into another ecosystem absolutely yeah i totally agree with that i just think it's interesting that it's just quietly done yeah do you think this uh signals any change for screens for uh for peloton equipment like do we are is there a bike plus plus in our future i don't know i think my, maybe this is just what I want. I think long before we see a bike plus plus, we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see the tread plus plus. That's what I think. You'll see a better tread plus than the current tread plus. Yeah, because what would you do to make it better? Well, or we we talked about this already um, a few weeks ago. I mean, it's been a couple months when they first started um, selling them. But like, keep in mind that it's the tread plus is being sold right now are stock from. 2018 so i think you're going to get an updated tablet Mm -hmm. i think you're going to get potentially a different motor although i've been told there's a difference between ac and dc and that even though it's a different horsepower it's actually better in the tread plus um but i think that primarily i see potentially the tablet being updated on the tread plus i don't know what other things they will add to that but i think that the tablet on the tread plus needs to be a tread plus plus interesting and i think when they get done selling these ten thousand, i think that's what they're going to do that that could be two years from now like i don't mean that's going to be soon but i do think it's coming would you think you'll be able to just purchase a new tablet and swap them out no 
Never, ever does anybody ever do that. That's like saying, hey, Apple, why don't you give me a cord I can use on every single one of my devices? But you were able to buy a new tablet for the bike at one point, right? Like when Only the- because that was a specific upgrade. That was a very spe- like my tablet had to be replaced because it wasn't working. Gotcha. That is not the same as- because like if it's a different shape and it fits on to the treadmill differently right. and I don't know if it will be or not because I don't know. It doesn't even exist. This right. is all in my head. Yeah. Um, but I just just companies don't do that. Yeah. They don't make it easy for you. Plus, if you've had the Tread Plus since 2018, I mean, I put a lot of miles on that thing, which I totally get. But if you've had it since 2024, that's a different story. That's a different story. That is a different story. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's why I don't I'm not expecting this is going to be three months from now. Right. I think it's going to be down the road, but I do think but it's nothing coming. lasts forever. No. And coming up after this, we're going to hit instructors in the news. We're going to talk about Jen Sherman's return and when and where you can find her. So stick around. Instructors in the news. Jen Sherman is back. Yeah, she made her return on Tuesday, the 23rd at 10 a.m. Uh, with a 20 minute 80s ride. And uh, lots and lots of people were there because it had been eight full weeks Ooh. since she had been live on a class. That is so, a, that's a bit a time. Yep, it is. It is. Well, I'm glad that she has returned and you don't have to constantly get peppered with where's Jen Sherman? I tell you what, people just freak out when they don't see an instructor. It's, I mean, I'll tell you more about it on the bonus episode. <laughs> Ooh, she's going to get saucy. That's it's worth your just, $5. I, I mean, it's just people jump to conclusions yeah. that I just think are ridiculous. For sure. Absol- just without any basis in reality. Yeah. Like just, but that's always the case, right? Like if, if you don't give people an explanation, even a vague one, they will construct their own narrative. Usually the worst case scenario. Absolutely. Because the, we are human and yes. that is what we do. Yeah. It's always going to go to they fired her. She was abducted. <laughs> like it's gonna, <laughs> yeah. It's always going to be something crazy. Peloton is silencing her. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm glad that she is back. Me too. Welcome back, JSS. So Tunde posted an interesting picture this week that may or may not be indicative of something. Yeah. Now, if you all are watching on the YouTube, you're going to want to scroll. You're going to zoom in onto yeah. this. Okay. Uh, because I- this is a photo shoot with Tunde, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing that exciting. She gets her picture taken all the time. She does. But the interesting thing to us, mm-hmm. the helper bees. Yes. Nikki totally spotted this, not me. Right. Um, the interesting thing to us is that she's clearly wearing a Peloton bra. So this is for Peloton. Okay. What class do you know has a barbell? Well, I'm probably not the right person to ask that question. I know. Question. It was rhetorical. Oh, okay. It was rhetorical. Okay. Also, what class do you know that has a bench in it? Now, the only thing that I can think of that exists like that. Are Peloton gym classes, right? But they don't film those. Like it's just a series of moves. That's kind of the whole point, right? So, so you can work at your own speed. Yes. Does that mean we're going to see Peloton gym classes that are filmed, like traditional classes? Yeah. Question mark. Does yeah. that mean we're going to see more weights classes that are more traditional? Weights classes. And yeah, more than just dumbbells for your arms. Does it mean this has something to do with Mirror Studio and it has nothing to do with Peloton, except for the fact she's wearing a Peloton bra? That's the part that, like, if she, this was for Lululemon, there would be a Lululemon emblem. Also, Pel- T- Tunde is not a Lululemon instructor. At least not yet. Also true. Yeah. I can't believe that they would get ahead of that. That's not. But, they're all, but then if that's the case, then they're also getting ahead of. Whatever Peloton, this is. Right. Whatever this could be. Could it be we're reading way too much into this? Like I just accused some people of Jim Sherman. <laughs> it's totally possible. I but don't you're know. not apoplectic. No. You're just like, oh, intriguing. Yeah, like, that's exactly. A different. It's a question mark. Yeah. So here's my next question. Does that mean Pel- if if this were for Peloton, does yeah. that mean Peloton is going to start selling barbells and weights? 
Well, they already sell weights. But I mean, like, oh, you mean plates? There we go. Yeah, I don't. I got a tonal. I don't know what this shit's called. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. There's and, nothing branded Peloton there. Yeah, which is another interesting thing, right? Yeah. So whatever this is for, and it, like, it, is that bench? Um, already out in the wild does that i mean i don't, I don't nothing it's about just benches. an inclined bench yeah it's kind of hard to tell if that's something you know that's exists they, they look so similar let me feed into your QAnon level conspiracy theory here come with me come okay. with me it's got orange knobs on i it. did i did notice that yeah. i did i will say one of the tipsters immediately said uh that their bowflex their bowflex gym bench also has red knobs gotcha so again could mean anything could mean anything but there's okay so let me go back to this bowflex might have it do you think there is a shot in hell that they would photograph tunde on bowflex equipment even if it's not equipment even if it's equipment they don't sell i gotta say no not and post it on social media yeah i'm thinking no so i will say this the the feet on that thing look very peloton-esque yeah it's a very different looking style bench but i know nothing about benches except the one that came with our tonal which but, is not like this at which all which is nothing like this but it also looks like the other weight benches i've seen in my life i didn't look at the weight bench from tonal and go well that's an interesting rethink i went right. that's a bench right and they put tonal they put the tonal name on it like, right which is fine but um but this looks unique compared to uh, like it's an incline decline bench yeah. so you can you can use it in a lot of different ways um but there are a lot of incline decline benches out there you know it would give peloton more things to sell that it would so anyway just uh we're de- like joe rogan we're just asking questions we're just and, asking questions and forming crazy conspiracy theories it's fun it's fun let's vote on them yeah that ought to be good <laughs> so uh Susie chan has uh a documentary about her that came out from peloton originals yeah so first let me just say let's focus on Susie for a second okay she's so amazing just so amazing i i don't think other women are amazing sure um but uh i watched this today and there is there is quite a bit of focus on the peloton community and i say quite a bit i mean probably like three to five minutes out of a 30 minute documentary so Mm -hmm. like some good focus right um of how much that the peloton community has supported Susie, but also it just shows her entire journey it's really really super cool uh now to Tom's point, the favorite part about this Peloton Originals, which I did post another article. I don't know if you have another article in here about that. I, as a matter of fact, do not. Okay. <laughs> well, then I'll wing it. Um, <laughs> so <Please do. laughs> the interesting thing is that when Peloton said that this documentary was dropping, it's it had a splash screen that said Peloton Originals, which is very movie studio sounding. Right? production studio sounding and this is a long form thing for peloton 30 35 minutes. minutes 30 35 it's minutes it's 30 yeah. minutes okay. um so when you think back about when bex was going she was doing her olympic trials for the great britain olympic team they had a documentary about her but it was very different because it ended up being four parts, each about seven to eight minutes, and they're, they were released in little chunks mm-hmm. over four different weeks. So it ended up being about the same length of time, right. but, but the presentation was very different. It did not say Peloton Originals on it. So that was different. Um, now, I did reach out to our powers that be at Peloton, mm-hmm. and uh, I got a chuckle in response, Okay, and they just said... This was done by our content team. That was it. Like maybe they just put it on there as like a little joke. Like we're a studio now. Ha, I don't. Ha, ha. I don't know. Like I don't know. We, they had fucking credits on this thing though. Yeah. Like it said produced by. It said featuring. It had all the instructors' names on it. Um, now maybe Bex did. And I just never paid attention to that because I usually am watching things while I'm doing something else. So For sure. It's totally possible I missed that. Yeah. But the other interesting thing about this was that it dropped on all of the equipment today. 
On the entertainment section, make of this what you will, there is now a Peloton Originals section. And all of the documentaries that Peloton has made, including Allie with Usher, Bex Gentry, Susie Chan, it's all out there. And you can work out just like you would if you were watching Amazon TV or YouTube TV, whatever. Also, several of you wrote to me today, you don't have it yet. I think they're still rolling entertainment out. So if it's still in beta and you don't have it, you don't have it. But right. for those of us that do, it's there and you can go see it and you would just get it just like you would any of the other entertainment options. Interesting. Well, the fact that they created its own like channel or they're gearing up to makes me think that you're going to see a lot more of these. Well, it also combines coincides nicely with TikTok fitness because they're going to have all of these things that they're showing over on TikTok fitness and there's going to be specific classes there's going to be behind the scenes content I think we can expect to see that on Peloton Originals as well oh I forgot to say if you take that class class with Susie Mm -hmm. the Badwater documentary you get a Badwater 135 badge oh look at that it's almost like you ran 135 miles with Susie (laughs) I mean it's pretty much the same thing I would think (laughs) joking <laughs> robin arzan is celebrating 10 years with peloton boy doesn't she look different i don't remember what she looked like before this is before oh this, this is, is 10 before. years ago i don't remember what she looks like now she looks different okay um i mean it's 10 years she aged like yeah. i don't mean that all in a that bad hustling's way. gonna take it out of a there girl will. <laughs> she looks great in both that's not a negative thing yeah. i just find it interesting that like <laughs> that i've been on this freaking platform this long <laughs> yeah that people are changing literally how they look over yeah. time anyway uh congrats to robin for a full decade absolutely i don't i look identical i've always been short and bold i was born that way you're born that way <laughs> yeah like lady Shorten. gaga <laughs> Well, that's why we celebrate you. Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. She was also a five-year national team member in rhythmic gymnastics and sports psychology for USA Gymnastics. It's Dr. Jen. Hello. Hello. Well, uh, we have another question for you that I think is going to resonate. It's oh, it makes me tear up just thinking about it. This is from Jenny Davis. Um, She lost her mother in September after nearly two years of being her primary caretaker. She is exhausted and, of course, grieving. She knows what she needs to do to be and feel healthy, but she's struggling with finding the motivation. Makes sense. Yeah. Oh, Jenny, I feel you, girl. Um, I was like, are you submitting questions yeah, to Dr. yourself? Jen, Dr. Jenny, for myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jenny, this Jenny um, also lost her mom. I lost my mom in June, as many of you know. Um, and I really, I get this. And, you know, every time I've gotten on the tread or the cycle or the rower or even just like on the mat, I consider it to be an accomplishment. And it's taken so much more energy. Every workout takes so much more energy than it did before after losing someone that you love. And that's okay. And I think that, you know, first of all, one of the things that I do is I think about how do I want to feel at the end of this instead of how does it feel to start this? Because my assumption since my mother passed away is that starting is going to feel shitty, but at the end, I'm going to feel glad that I did it. And I think it's really, I think that working out is really important for your mood, getting some serotonin, getting a sense of accomplishment. Um, I think that those things are really important right now. And I also get how much of a struggle it is. And I want to encourage you to do a few things. Um, One is if you're not already in therapy or um, involved in a grief and loss support group, I want to encourage you to do that because having someone to talk to and a place to bring this to and someone to help you go like, oh, yeah, that's normal. That's understandable, like is really important um surrounding yourself with people who knew your mother like for me um i've had a lot of time that i like i reach out to a a girlfriend of mine from high school who spent a lot of time with my mom and we i had her over for dinner we sat and talked about my mom just people who knew my mom like any memories that anyone can share with me that either i forgot about or i didn't know about 
for me, it's like a gift from my mom. Like I can't have conversations with her now that she's not here, but being able to hear conversations she had with other people is like having one with her. And that's really valuable and really meaningful to me. And I'm sure it is to Jenny. So, um, and also to understand that the stages of grief and loss, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross talked about denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And you don't get to graduate from one yeah. and check it off. And I was like, about to oh, say the same thing. That. Like just because yeah, they I, list them in order doesn't yeah. mean they take place in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It can go in any order and you can vacillate between anger and sadness in a minute or two or a day or a week. And so to understand what these stages are is really important. Um, and to give yourself the room for self-care, to really plan it in your day, because it, it's going to take more energy. I'm taking a lot more baths. Um, I got a candle that has my mom's name on it and some, like, some stuff about her, and I burn it when I have to take my bath, and my mom loved baths also, and I light more incense than I did before, and I really just try to do things that help me be calm and help me kind of center myself and be in touch with my grief. And also to, talking to other family members, talking to my daughter, talking to Eric, talking to my dad has been really, really helpful with all of this. And, and I hope Jenny, that you have some support, whether you're in a relationship or you have siblings or other relatives who knew and loved your mom, but it's 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 a loss. And, and in a situation like yours, <clears throat> you grieve the loss of your healthy mom and you also grieve the loss of your sick mom because you had this time period for two years where you were taking care of her and you were her caregiver and that was a different dynamic we grow up with a parent taking care of us and then at a certain point that flips if they have an extended illness and we become their caregiver and that's a whole different relationship that you grieve what a great point. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I when my mom died, she I wasn't a care I wasn't her caregiver by any stretch of the imagination, but she was in and out of like comas and stuff for like 3 months and yeah. and so we were on that for the 3 months it's just me and my sister. We were like on just constantly vigilant of like back and forth to the hospital or hospitals and then nursing homes and then back to hospitals. And yeah. and so it's like there's also this kind of feeling of guilt sometimes because it's like like I did not want it to end the way it did, but there was also a sense of relief when it was over. Of course, and and that she wasn't suffering anymore. Right. And that you weren't having to watch her in this terrible state. And it, especially like there's some families that don't talk about death or illness and others that do. I happen to come from a family where we talked about it a lot. And if you are in a family where you know my mom doesn't want to be hooked up to these machines. My mom's preference is to help her to pass or to not see her struggle unnecessarily. Like it's, it's so upsetting even more so like not only are you watching someone you love suffer, but you're also knowing that this is not what they want. Yeah. But also there are certain things you can't change. Right. Yeah. Like with my mom, she kept, almost getting better like oh they were trying yeah. to get her to the point where they could do an organ transplant and then they you know they would get her to a certain benchmark and she'd get almost there and then fall back and then like just yeah. it just kept doing that so it's yeah but uh but well thank yeah. you for answering that i know that that's a, a topic that's very uh recent for you and that that can be difficult. yeah yeah and i did i've done i've only done one post since my mom passed away in june and it was about grief and loss yeah and jenny i check out my instagram at dr jen man two ends on jen two ends on man and hopefully that will will help you a little bit awesome well thank you so much yes thank you and coming up after this we're going to tell you who the latest artist series is spotlighting and give you a past guest update so stick around peloton artist collaborations the latest artist series spotlights pink. Yay! <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited about this. The oh, are you a fan? Yeah, a little bit. But here's the cool part, Tom. Yes. Susie Chan is teaching a pink class. Holy cow. <sighs> I'm surprised there's not crystal shrapnel everywhere. I mean, the squee was so loud, all the helper <laughs> bees heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited about this. And I'll tell you what, 
I am not the only one. I have. No, she's this, a big deal. She is a big deal. But we have had this particular article has been shared so much more than <laughs> any of the other past article, like the artist series. Right. Like they they typically get liked and people, you know, make their little comments. Yeah. Like, Who? Who is yeah. this? Or Who's pink? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that one. <laughs> um, but like people are so freaking stoked. This has been shared everywhere and people are tagging their friends like they are so excited and there are a crap ton of classes 14 classes 14 chances holy cow to have an amazing class with pink i am so so down for this yeah you can raise your class (laughs) (laughs) so what (laughs) that's not what a fan would say (laughs) Well, that's the name of a song. I know. Okay. <laughs> I've seen her too. Well, <laughs> I was there next with. I was there next to you, although you might not have realized it because you were very focused. I was. There was a lot of <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of singing. Past guest update. You might recall a guest we had on a while back, Jill Alana. She's a little person. She had a lot of uh, interesting tidbits about how she can use Peloton because the bike is not equipped for someone of her size and she has a podcast and and uh she was able lucky enough to have bradley rose on her podcast so the name of her podcast is always looking up and she sat down and talked to bradley rose uh and they talked about what it means to be part of the disabled but they also she ended up taking um the class uh day of disabilities class with brad bradley as well so um She was very excited about that. As she should be. Yeah. So congrats to her. That's awesome. New content. Hey, Crystal, don't forget that we need to do another bingo call out in this episode. Noted. I'm here to help you. Why, thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for keeping me. I don't know how you would do all this without me. <laughs> if you if if the pink class didn't make your head explode, maybe I will. <laughs> You're sure trying. <laughs> well, this is bingo call out number two for the episode. Nico Serrani. As a reminder, if you don't, if you don't typically take classes with German instructors, you will or might need to make sure you change your filters to include German instructors. Now that bingo is out of the way, let's take a look at the TCO top five, where we reach out to you, the listeners, and make you do work so we don't have to. Uh, Our first class that people are recommending this week, your favorite Peloton Row Boot Camp. Our first class is a Peloton Row Boot Camp. This is from November 13th, and it is a full body 45 minute with Katie Wong. Listener Sonia Norman is bringing the second ever Row Boot Camp to the TCO Top 5. She loved the five segment format. She says that her legs were still sore from the lower body floor segment, and she loves Katie's personality and positive energy. Katie's great. She was very nice. She is. Uh, then we have the favorite Peloton ride. This was from December 17th, a 30 minute eighties pop ride with Allie love Greta Kenner uh, had this as her pick for the week. The playlist was packed with hits from the ladies who rocked the eighties. The music and energy in the class pushed you to the top of the Hills with confidence. Her emotional shout out was moving and inspiring what a way to start a monday that's awesome yeah and then we had the favorite peloton arms and lightweights this is from january 10th of this year a 10 minute arms and lightweights with kirsten ferguson holly brim said this was honestly she said honestly this one after a run it might have only been 10 minutes and lightweights but she didn't waste a second of it and made sure those (laughs) made those weights made you work (laughs) I don't know that I've ever seen someone recommend an arms class that wasn't Tune Day. I know, right? <laughs> uh, and then we have the favorite Peloton artist series. This comes from January 18th, Leanne Hainsby, 30 minute earth wind and fire ride uh it was stirring quite the buzz marilyn marsog said that leanne's earth wind and fire ride from january 18th it was so fun and she knew all the songs to sing along to and then we have our favorite unstackable this was a run from september of 23 this was a 60 minute pop run with jeffrey mckeckern um and this one came from Teresa miller she said that her class uh hits both so top class 
and an unstackable. Oh. The class and the playlist was awesome. It did not feel like 60 minutes. She would not stack it. She's still getting used to running for 60 <laughs> minutes. Understood. And she will definitely bookmark it to take it again. That's awesome. Also, lots of new stuff talked about in This Week at Peloton. Yeah, there was a bunch of new things. We've got new low impact cardio cl- classes dropping. So there's going to be those are going to be taught by uh, Callie Gullickson. Um, and then they have that's kind of joining what Rebecca Kennedy has been doing. So that's the first time Cal- Callie has had any of these classes. Um, also, for the first time, we are seeing strength benchmark classes. So these are going to be uh, a Each of these classes will have a benchmark segment that you can keep returning to so you can see how you've progressed over time. Robin Arzan will be teaching a live 20-minute full body strength class and a 20-minute body weight class taught by Andy Spear will drop at the same time. And then we have new Chelsea set classes, Focus Flows. So there's going to be two of these dropping. They are going to build on the signature poses and they will be available on demand on Friday, January 26th. We also have new German classes. They are continuing to expand. Peloton is continuing to expand to the German collection. Uh, there's going to be German dubbed Pilates and shadow boxing. It's going to be dropping on demand on the 26th. And more content is on the deck for the following day. We're going to be getting a 30 minute tread boot camp taught by Marcel Maurer. And that's going to be dropping on Saturday, the 27th. So lots of fun stuff. We also had some uh, new apparel stuff come out this week. We did. There was a lot of things. Number one, there is a winter sale going on, uh, select items only, but you get an extra 50% off of those sale items. Uh, Also, there was a brand new capsule collection that dropped from NUX. We have not seen a NUX capsule collection we haven't seen a collection from NUX in years. Like, like what's NUX? Um, it is uh, an apparel brand. Um, I actually have a purple. It's like a light purple set from probably 2019, maybe 2020. Um, so it's been a long time since we've seen it. And there was another Lululemon drop that happened this week as well. Um, and I didn't really see anything in the women's side that I just had to have. Phew. But uh, the men's colors, the the one, if you're watching right now, Andy Spear is wearing like this really pretty cranberry color. Mm-hmm. I wish they had that color for women because I want that shirt in women's sizes. Now, I know I could just buy it, but they never fit the same. So yeah. don't at me. I, I know. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that if <laughs> yeah. I were you. Yeah. I, it's I, more I money bet. for voodoo movies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got plenty right now. Don't worry. I'll be back. Peloton birthdays. And finally, we have one birthday this week. It's on January 28th, and it is from Kendall Tool's mother, I guess. <laughs> really, technically, is who it's from. But, uh, but since we don't have a way to say hi to Kendall Tool's mother, say happy birthday to Kendall Tool instead. Happy birthday. And coming up after this, we're going to have our interview of the week. Crystal is going to talk to Andrew Sellers about VO2 Masters and her journey there. So stick around. You don't have to listen to me. Checking in with the Peloton community. All right. This is uh, Crystal O'Keefe. And uh, normally we have Tom doing the introductions, but he is working today. So it is just going to be me and Dr. Andrew Sellers, who uh, was on a few weeks ago and we talked about VO2 Master and uh, my long term plan to use VO2 Master to hopefully run the New York City Marathon next year. Uh, And I'm super excited to have Dr. Sellers back to talk about what's happened since then so andrew thank you so much for joining well thank you very much for inviting me back it's uh, <laughs> it's great to be back uh exciting week in marathon i don't know if you watched the chicago I marathon did. And- wow wow I mean, Truly can you incredible. imagine just being able to run that fast that long that's just wow uh, even be able to run that fast for 200 meters would be uh incredible for most people and i I don't know if you've ever seen the the track that they had a big open rubber track uh running at uh kipchoge's world record pace no uh, i didn't see it years ago and they have a there's a great online video on youtube of a whole bunch of uh people off the street trying to run that speed on a moving track and nobody lasts more than about 10 seconds. It's incredible wow. how fast they move to be able to run those times. So for those who don't know, uh, uh, he wrote the, the Chicago Marathon record. And I 
I saw two different posts and I actually don't know. I didn't actually double check to see whether he actually broke the world record, but he's right down around 201 for a marathon, which is faster than 20 K an hour, which for, uh, in the U S would be faster than 13 miles an hour. I mean, it's just, hours. it's yeah. just incredible to think that a human being can move that fast. And, yeah. and, and like you said, for that long, like that's, yeah. It's it's my brain cannot wrap my head around. <laughs> no, it's, it's incredible. Uh, and then the other exciting thing for me, of course, is uh, it's Ironman week. Uh, so world championships for the men uh, happened for the first time uh, in France this year because they split the men's and women's race. So uh, two of the athletes that we support uh, did extremely well. And one of the athletes that I worked with last year won world championships uh, for the first time. So that's Sam Laidlow from France. And we were over there doing exactly the same testing that you're doing wow. uh, with him last year. And so he won, he was second uh, last year in Kona and he was, he won in Par- in Nice uh, this year, which is awesome. And then uh, the women's race is happening in Kona this weekend, and it's the first time they've had a they've had a designated weekend for women racing. So it's only women racing. There's three thousand women and about sixty pro women, uh, with a few athletes that we support. But one of my old friends, uh, who I who I grew up doing triathlon with uh, from Victoria, who's the first fifty year old pro woman to qualify for Kona and she's racing Kona for her first time. So uh, watch out for Melanie McQuaid, uh, who's in, who's my uh, close to my age. She's a little younger than me, but she is racing in Kona for the first time. So, uh, and the, the front of that field, the top eight women are all, will be very, very close. And it's, it'll be the most exciting race to watch in years because the women won't be distracted by the age group men and stuff that are racing with them. So. It's exciting time for endurance sports uh, this week. So. That is exciting. Wow. Wow. I will definitely be watching that. that is, I yeah. had no idea they'd even separated them out like that this year. Yeah. So Saturday morning, uh, it'll be mid-morning your time because you're four, hour, uh, four, four hours or five hours after Hawaii time. Uh, so hours. I'm two hours after California. <laughs> yeah. So you're two. Uh, so you're four hours after Hawaii. So Okay. Okay. Yeah, they'll be mid morning by the time they start. They start at seven a.m., so that'll be eleven o'clock ish your time. I will be watching. Okay, <laughs> okay on to you. <laughs> and my numbers will not be that impressive. So <laughs> your numbers are impressive for what you are doing. You're doing great. So uh, just as a re- a quick recap, this is the test uh, results from your very first test that you did, uh, and this is on a one minute step test. You started at a really easy pace, which is a walking pace for you. You went up to as fast as you felt that you could do. And this is just summarizes those results. And so we went over this last time, but maximum heart rate on that day was 167, which was at a VO2, gave you a VO2 max of 31 at a power output, which you were using. I think you were using a treadmill Mm -hmm. uh, to determine that power output of 230. So, uh, and we determined, the program determined a VT1 and a VT2. These are thresholds, ventilatory thresholds. So this is below this, you're going quite easy, which is basically your warm up, early fat burning phase. Between VT1 and VT2 is really your endurance phase. And above VT2, you're getting into vigorous and maximal efforts. And so we were using these to help guide your training. And I was asking you to do all of your training under VT2 and see what happens. So really, but training between VT1 and VT2 is really what the recommendation, what I was recommending. And I also asked you to repeat the test uh, after a month and... I suggested that instead of doing the one minute step test that you did a three minute step test. So I have that result here There's a second there. And I'm going to take a, we're going to take a quick look at this today just to compare now. Um, so some of the numbers are the same that you reached this very similar max heart rate. What this one was 167 on the three minute step, you hit 166. Interestingly enough, you used a lot more oxygen yeah. when you were going three minutes at a time. So you got, you maxed out at a higher wattage, but your VO2 didn't actually climb as high. So 
If you actually just looked at VO2 max, you'd say, well, you did way better. You're now actually sitting in the 50th percentile. You're sitting right at the mean for women your age. Whereas the first test you did, you were sitting in what, what the program determines is, is a lower level than that. So it calls it poor. I, I hate the wording, but it, it's there, right? So, <laughs> it, it is so what you, it went is. From, you went from poor to fair, and you're right cusping onto the good side. So if you look at your VO2 max score, you're like, well, look at that. That's fantastic. If you look at it from my perspective, and this is why VO2 max isn't a great, I don't think is a great determinant, is you actually didn't run as fast because you were doing three minute steps instead of one minute steps. So you got tired after three minutes at 200 watts. It was really tiring. So you didn't do, you couldn't do the next step. When you only did one minute at 200 watts, you tried the next step, which was 230, and, and were able to do part of that 230. So the testing ends up making a difference to what the numbers show. And so for me, you were actually using more oxygen to get not as high an output. And so for okay. me, that's actually a backward slide. That's not the trend we want to do. What we want you to do for the marathon is use less oxygen to run faster, to have higher power outputs. So over time, what will, what I want to see is you being able to sustain this high power output at lower oxygen outputs. And that'll mean to me that you'll be able to sustain that for much longer. And you're going to need to sustain whatever power output you do for your marathon for four hours, four and a half, even maybe five hours. And so having a high VO2 max, if we move this VO2 max up and even up into the excellent, but you can't sustain it for very long, it does you, it does you no good at all. Mm -hmm. So the positive trend is that you're, you're able to tap into more oxygen use. The downward trend in this first month between the August test and September test is you weren't actually able to hit as high a wattage, which for the marathon doesn't matter. Remember what, where you're going to be running right now. If you had to run the marathon tomorrow, you'd be running 140, 150 watts is the goal that we would set you for. Ideally, we're in a year from now, we're going to be able to do this for four or five hours. Right now, it's kind of a three minute effort for you. And that's kind of where you end up failing after three or four minutes. The goal is to be able to do that for three or four hours. And so that's really what the focus is on. So um, I don't know if you had any questions about that quick review that you wanted to talk to everybody about, but the next third, the next question that we were, we were going to talk about is how how to train now that you have this data, right? Yeah. But did you have any questions before we moved on from this? I I think um, it's just like I, I'm curious to see where the next the next step the the next test goes because I feel like and and I told you this when we were talking offline that that I feel like my running has actually gotten easier, like the same route that I do every day. Um, so, and you know, I've had vacations and things like that. So I haven't been able to test. So I'm really curious to see if that number, like it's, it, it's, it's almost annoying because I want to like test every week to everyone. I want to test every day and you're not necessarily going to see that number go up. And yeah. uh, it kind of messes with your head because I feel like I'm going so slow. It is so counterintuitive. I feel like if I ran faster more often that would make the number go up i hear you and i'm trusting the process but i'm just telling you it's driving me crazy <laughs> and so for those for those that maybe didn't hear the advice from last time is i have given crystal some really basic recommendations which are really slow running and they're sometimes actually walking pace to keep her heart rate down because the long-term development of her cardiac system is going to be benefited by lower heart rates. If she pushes these high heart rates, she's actually not going to develop the structure of that heart in a way that's going to benefit her for the marathon. So I really insisted she backed off the train, the intensity so that she could run longer, more comfortably with the goal of being able to add more time to her training and actually do a couple long runs during the week which requires her to slow down so that she doesn't burn herself out and that she can run longer and longer and longer at lower intensities. But I can understand that that does drive some people crazy, especially if they're coming out of a, a mindset where their training is sort of 45, 30 to 45 minutes and sometimes an hour is 
you're trying to jam in as much intensity as you can because you only have an hour. So why not? You have to go hard because otherwise it doesn't feel like a workout. Exactly. We're, we're, trying to, we're making that switch to marathon thought and endurance sports, which is lower intensity for much longer training. And if you try to do that same hammer intensity, you will kill yourself. It, it, you'll last four or five weeks and then you'll burn out and that'll be the end of it. And we really need to keep the long-term the, the New York marathon, that's why I like the idea of New York because it's more than a year away. And really what we're training for is New York marathon five years from now or Chicago 10 years from now where you're still loving running and you're still showing improvement. And yeah. that is the fascinating thing about marathons is you can actually improve for the next 10 years. And that's the exciting thing is that you're not going to be as good as you can possibly be next year. Yeah. You're just going to be scratching the surface of what's possible next year. And hopefully we've made it so fun that you're going to want to keep doing it. And it becomes a life, a lifelong endeavor instead of just a, a one year goal. So I, that's my goal that. for you is to be, is to be so happy after New York that you want to keep doing it. I, I hope that that happens. I would love okay. that. Good. Uh, so you sent me a question about whether stride sensors and the programs that they develop that are, are automatically based on what you've done before and all the data they're they're using your data to give you an idea of what is what a, a suitable or suggested training plan would be. So I'm going to suggest you share that up on the screen and we can talk about how some of the good points and the bad points of that plan and then how we might be able to modify it to make it worth for you. So I'll stop sharing here. And while you're pulling it up, I'll tell people a little bit for people that don't know what stride sensors are. They're little foot pods that you attach to your laces on your shoe, and they pull a ton of data off of your running dynamics. So it the, the simplest thing it gives is how much power you're producing, and it uses the speed that those foot pods are moving and the number of foot strikes in a minute so it can give you your cadence. Uh, it gives you how long a stride length you have. It tells you, it can even tell you how long your foot is spending on the ground. So your ground reaction time. Uh, so those are the, the big metrics are cadence, stride length, and uh, power output, wattage. And it converts it to wattage, uh, which for cyclists is a really handy metric because it, it becomes a lot more uh, easy to understand sort of what good numbers are and what what challenging numbers are. The other things on uh, stride. So um, as Chris is going to share, she looked at a number of different programs to see, and she sent them to me to ask me my advice uh, because Chris and I aren't in a coaching athlete relationship. We're just, I'm just sort of helping her understand VO2 master. And I didn't feel it was, I felt, I didn't feel like I had the time to be able to coach her properly. So she was looking for coaching options that she could fit into her schedule and work around her schedule. So she sent me um, to ask me my advice about the stride one. And I was quite impressed with how accurately the stride used the data that she presented to actually suggest tempos for her different duration runs. The one downside about stride is because it was using past information, most of the, the, most of the runs that, Crystal had done before were short duration, higher intensity runs. So the, the recommendations that Stride was giving her was for more of the same short duration, high intensity runs, but she's trying to change what she's working on. So uh, I suggested that the initial program that Stride was suggesting was really short um, and didn't give her long enough duration workouts to actually be beneficial. Uh, thank you. And then, um, okay, so Stride Plans, um, they have this really cool thing called a plan builder. And so you can pick all the different things. So I went with a marathon. This was the last one I sent you. And yeah. um, and then I said, uh, we want this to be base training, actually. And for those, I'm going to give you my little theory about um, periodization of training. I really I'm not a huge fan of periodization. I really think you, for you, Crystal specifically, and for many athletes who are developed for running their marathon for the first time, you really need years and years of base training. You don't need any of the other parts of periodized training, which includes a race prep and tapering and everything else. You just need the more base training you do, the better you will be in five years. So, um, 
we're going to move away from the idea of periodized planning, but because that's how they do it, they're going to ask for, they're going to ask you to commit to sort of a, a periodized idea, as opposed to just understanding what we're trying to do is develop your physiology, which really happens through miles and miles and months and months of steady commitment to training. And so that falls under the idea of base training. Interesting. Okay. Well, that that makes sense. Um, and so you may not like this one because it, it basically says, it's still saying that I need to build fitness, but um, basically there's a lot of, uh, a lot of easy runs of 30 minutes, long run. The longest run is three hours. And then every the week maxes at four hours and fifty five minutes. Which so go back to that because that that actually screen sort of shows it in. So uh, if you look, if you saw that page, it actually had a really smart development. There you go. So it just starts with vo- with volume that increases slightly each week, and increase and over time you can see it adds a little bit more duration and a little bit more each week and each month. So is that eight weeks? I think that's eight periods. I think that's what it's doing. Is it saying like, that's going to be, because it was saying it was 20 weeks long. So, okay. Okay. So that's, so there's, so each of those columns is a different week. So you can see what they've done is, is the first three weeks is a little bit more each week. And then there's a rest week but with a little bit less volume. Then the next four weeks is a little bit more than the first three weeks. And then there's a down week. Then there's five weeks of a little bit higher volume, and then there's a rest week. So it, that's a that's a typical way that a lot of coaches would 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 write this for you is a slowly building up, and then a little bit of a break, then a little bit more than it did before, then a little bit of a break, and that it's a totally reasonable way to do it. In our coaching methods, we tend to use your body telling us when to take your breaks, but as a as a basic free or or low cost program this is not a bad way to do it and so long as you're using for me using some sort of metrics to see how you're responding to that and making sure you're not over stretching yourself or over pushing yourself or underdoing it then this is a great way to go and i think those durations that they've suggested where there are some two and three hour runs towards the end after you've built up tolerance to that i think is great and we just need to be careful that we're not over pushing it and that we're going to use so we are going to intermittently do every three or four weeks do some testing to see if it's actually working and doing what it says it's going to do and then we're going to modify the program based on those results okay so that's how we are going to use vo2 master you and i chris so they're going to use vo2 master to modify this program is to make sure that it's not over pushing you and not expecting you to run too fast okay that's okay. good and they've so, got all this stuff in here. Is there anything else that we should look at? Like, well, let's just take let's just take a look at one of the first workouts and see what it says. So, uh, stretch your first day. So, it has, I mean, it's a really comprehensive program, right? It gives you uh, what was that very first Tuesday? Was so, it? Oh, that it very first thing. so, so there's some drills to do, and then day one was an easy aerobic recovery run. Yep. Right. So it's 20 minutes to do one mile which is really slow Mm -hmm. and really easy. And it's going to give you lots of time. I mean, it's just, but it's meant to be an easy jog, right? Yes, that's exactly right. And you can see the wattage. So it's giving you a predicted wattage, 109 to 124. We know that you can run 200 watts at the top end. So this is half of what you're capable of doing. This is probably, for you, is actually probably a walking pace. Might be a brisk walk. It it won't even be. It might be a very very slow jog. But I actually think if you ran, if you actually start jogging, you'll hit more than 120 watts. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that probably is true. Yeah, which again for you, this is actually really easy. But it's supposed to be. This is it. They've listed as an easy aerobic recovery run. So then there's some drills. Then day three, they have you do some near threshold in, intensive. So you can see the intensity is done in those blocks. This is 45 minutes, two and a half miles. Um, So I'll just read through it quickly. So it's saying that these are close to your threshold. And if you remember back, your ventilatory thresholds are around that 155 to 160 watts. And that's exactly what it's predicted based on your previous run. So this is where I I was really interested to see what intensities they were suggesting. And I think 
it happens that this is actually going to be pretty close to what I would have suggested from the VO2 data. Okay. Well, that's great. What will be interesting for you is whether it feels like that or not. And then being able to see whether this intensity of interval training actually has the benefit that it actually, and what really this is doing is trying to get you to run close to what your marathon pace is going to be for short intervals with lots of rest. And that's why they have you recover right after that for like a exactly. Sport. So okay. six minutes of running, three minutes of recovery. Okay. Right. And it looks like they do that uh, three times. So they do it one minute on and two minutes of recovery, which is twice as much rest of, as the running. And then the opposite six minutes of running, three minutes of rest, three times. And at the end of that workout, it sh that should feel like a hard workout for you, but with the recovery, it should be, it should be sustainable. And if, if this is predicting right, and if our VO2 testing confirms that those numbers are right, then that's the right intensity for you to do those kind of thresholdy intervals. Okay. And, yeah. and this is helpful for what I'm trying to do for the marathon. Like that was my big, my other big question, because right now you have me like running like four four to five times, whatever I can do, like as much as I can yeah. get in. So I was like really nervous about just taking on this without talking to you. Cause I'm like, I don't know. Am I making it worse? Am I making it better? I don't know. <laughs> doing, this, one, doing this kind of workout once a week in my eyes is fine. Okay. Doing okay. this is all of your workouts being high intensity intervals, which is what you, how you used to do it is, is not suitable for what you're trying to build, but for one workout a week, of a fun workout where there's some a little bit higher intensity, a little bit higher uh, challenge is totally fine. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes you feel a lot better. Okay. They also and then, so let's see what else is in there. So then there's some strength work and some plyometrics, which might be really hard after that kind of run. So I'd be a little bit careful with those, but see, this is a chance for you to see, this is because it's the first time you've done it. This is where you try it and see how it goes. Like, oh my God, my legs were so dead after that. I couldn't imagine doing plyometrics or, or doing any stuff. So my suggestion is you skip it if it feels too hard. If it feels good, you keep doing it. And, and then we chat about it after. Okay, reasonable. All okay, right. then later on in the week, there's some drills. And then there's an easy recovery run, which is again, 20 minutes long, one mile. It, it's crazily short and really, really slow for you. Again, it might be just be a walk. Um, it might be too easy and too short. So those are the ones, if it feels way too easy and you want to add distance to it, you can totally add distance to that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then there should be a long, then your, there's your long run. So your long run they're saying is a hour and 15 minutes, which is getting close to four miles for you. Again, if you scroll down and look at the wattages, those should be very easy wattage numbers to hit with the stride sensor on. And, and the VO2 testing we did would confirm that those numbers are really easy for you. You may, again, have to be walk jogging that because it's such low intensity that you to keep your heart rate down low and keep in that wattage range, you might be walking. Anytime it goes uphill, for sure, you'll be walking. But you may be able to do some easy jogging on the flat and jogging on the downhill to hold that wattage. But you think I should follow what they have? I'd like to, I'd like to see what happens if you follow those numbers. I would, I would have given you recommendations on your heart rate okay. based on your VO2 data, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But I think that you're, when we look at this later at how your body responded to this, so you, when you pull that data back and look at it afterwards, you're going to have your heart rate data and the wattage data and we'll be able to compare that to your VO2 tests and see where you fit. And that's what we'll compare it and say, yeah, you know what? Those waters that you hit gave you the exact heart rate that we were hoping that it would get you. And we're happy with that moving forward. If we look at that heart rate and your heart rate's way higher than we expected it to be, then these numbers are, are over predicting what you should be doing. Likewise, okay. if, if your heart rate is really low, you just never got your heart rate up into up over a hundred or 110, then we can say, listen, you know what, that's actually not benefiting you as much as we were hoping. So we're going to increase the intensity a little bit. Okay. So that's how we'll use what we'll use the data off of how you felt on the day and what your heart rate did in response to these wattages to see whether this program is actually, we think this program will work for you. Awesome. That sounds yeah. very reasonable. Very exciting. But I think this is a reasonable place to start. I, I don't have any problems with any of those workouts. 
other than respond, listening to your body while you're doing it to make sure that you're not over pushing. And on those two easy workouts where they've given you 20 minutes to do a mile, it's going to feel really, really easy. And if you feel like going a little longer than that, by all means, those days are totally okay to go longer as so long as you're keeping it really easy. Okay. Okay. Well, that is super, super helpful. Is yeah. there anything else in stride that you want to look at before? No, I think that I, that was the main thing was just to sort of take a look at the first week because you can see all the weeks are kind of are very similar. They're just going to slowly build distance up. And they're going to mainly do that by adding a little bit of time to each of the workouts. So instead of being a 20 minute workout, it'd be a 30 minute easy jog. And instead of being an hour and 15, it'll be an hour and a half. And that's how they'll build the time. And that that's perfect because there is a plan. You can see a plan for 20 weeks mm -hmm. and that's mentally, that's really good because you are committing to something that's going to keep you on track. And I think that's a, a really positive part of this whole thing is, is having some sort of positive feedback that you're checking out the boxes and you're getting the work done. And then we'll take a look and, and see how the, how it's responding. That's what we're going to use VO2 master is to help. Is it making the difference that we want it to make? And are you feeling the changes that you're expecting to see? And so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how your test goes this weekend. You and I will talk after the test to see how it went for you. And then the next time we get together for a podcast, we'll either have two more tests to, to see over time, one after your vacation and holidays, which is this weekend's. And then my suggestion would be in three or four weeks, you're going to test again after three weeks of the stride training. And we'll say, Hey, look at that. Here's, here's what we expect to see. And here's what actually happened in that test. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So that is super helpful. Um, it's a little, it's a little disheartening that I kind of feel like I went a little bit backwards, but I, I genuinely feel better. Like when I go and do these runs, they feel so but remember that test was in, there's two things about that to remember, to not be disheartened about okay. that test was between August and September where you were just getting started. True. The tests were different. One was a one minute ramp test and the other was a three minute ramp test and three minutes are harder to do. You're doing, you're spending longer at each interval. So, and that's, again, we really pulled those up, not to say that you were taking a backward step, but to show that if you just look at VO2 max numbers and ignore everything else, your numbers look way better. You went from the 29th percentile to the 50th percentile. So they're way better. My concern is that if we ignore all the other pieces of information that are in that test set, then we could be we could be fooled into thinking you're a remarkably better athlete, which doesn't make sense. In four weeks, it doesn't make sense that you would go that much. What it does, what it shows is the difference of the test, right? Not the right. difference in you, because you're really not that much different an athlete in four weeks. I would have expected to see small, small changes. And really your max heart rate was no different. Your ventilatory threshold was almost exactly the same. So those are the changes that are going to happen slower over time. And it's important not to get caught up in one number or one test. Yep. You're right. I think because you're noticing that there's a difference, you'll see more difference between the August and October test or between the September on October test, because you're noticing a difference already. And though that, that feeling will show up in a test. And when we redo it again in three or four weeks after consistent training with the stride sensor, I think you're going to see another small change. And that's what we'll have a fun time looking at at the next podcast. Wonderful. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for all of this. I really appreciate not only your time, but your expertise and, and just helping me understand all the numbers and, and stay on track. So thank you for all of this. It's a really fun journey. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I get to be a part of it. Oh, I am too. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So I'm going to jump in. Please do. Before you wrap things up. I, I mean, you didn't need me for the interview. Do you need me for the wrap of the show or can yeah. I just can I, cut I, uh, I talked to Andrew Sellers after I we went through all this data and mm -hmm. I realized that I had been using my stride on the tread to mark my like can get my power point being that a couple of those tests I didn't have that so the power is like completely off and so when we re-ran the numbers I had actually improved by 40 points on 
oh. like my power across the board. So uh, he was like, make sure that at the end of that, you <laughs> tell people that you have improved 40 points. So I was super excited about that. And uh, I will be talking to Andrew again as another checkup in a couple of weeks. And I will have another update for you very soon. Awesome. So uh, I guess that brings the show to a close. Until next week, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can also find me on all the socials and on the uh, Peloton leaderboard. That's what it's called. At Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online at facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there be sure and like the page join the group and of course uh don't forget our patreon at patreon.com slash the clip out where for five bucks a month you get all sorts of bonus content and you get uh, ad free episodes and we like you extra (laughs) we sure do so uh that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time keep pedaling and running and rowing